Hi everybody, Kurt Zepp here. In this video, I'm going to compare my new Antlia 3 nanometer oxygen 3 filter with the ZWO 7 nanometer oxygen 3 filter. Now, let me digress a little bit. I first purchased this camera, it's a ASI, ZWO ASI 16, 1600 years ago, probably about four, four, five, six years ago. And I got it as a package deal with the eight position filter wheel. And I got a full set of filters with it. And I've been very happy with this. Very, very happy indeed. However, I've always noticed my narrowband images, they were good, but the they weren't quite super good. I've seen other other people's images and they were a little bit sharper. And in particular, my O3 was lacking, if you will. So that's why I decided to get this uh, new filter. Now, when I purchased this set years ago, they really didn't, there wasn't too many options for uh, filters. And the filters that were available at the time uh, were very, very expensive, much more expensive than the ZWO package set. So that's why I went with the ZWO package set, better to get something. So what's good about this video is I've got this eight position, because I've got the eight position filter wheel, I've got an opening on the filter wheel, so I can just put this Antlia filter in that open spot and I can do a pretty good comparison. I'm gonna do it in one night. I'm, I'm gonna take a series of uh, exposures with the ZWO filter and I'm just gonna Right right after, I'm going to take a series of exposures with the Antlia filter so I can have a really good comparison. You may be wondering why I didn't get the full suite of Antlia filters. Well, they're more expensive, and I figured if I do it this way, I can go one filter at a time. And eventually, I'll have the whole new, the whole new suite. But I wanted to start with the oxygen because that was the weakest. <laughs> Okay, if you saw me put the filter into the filter wheel, you'll notice I actually took the luminosity filter out and I left it blank and I put the, the new O3 filter in position eight. The reason I took the luminosity filter out is because something's wrong with it. I've, I, I've had an artifact on there for like a, over a year now and I haven't been using uh, the luminosity filter at all. In fact, I've just been, when I take luminosity, I just actually go to that eighth position that didn't that did not have a filter in it. This camera already has a, lumina, a UV IR filter built into it. So you really didn't need that luminosity filter in the first place. Okay, well, let's go ahead and I'll do this experiment and I'll get back to you another, an, another day and see what our results are. Well, hello folks, I'm back, and here is a single five-minute exposure of IC410, which is the Tadpole Nebula, or Tadpoles, and if you take a look at this image, this is with the ZWO 7 nanometer O3 filter, and this looks like a pretty good image for all intents and purposes. I, I did capture some sort of a satellite or something in here, of course, but let's uh, examine this a little bit more closely. Now, the first thing you'll notice up here is this star halo around a really bright star in Auriga. And these are pretty much well known to occur with these with oxygen, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to test out or get a new O3 filter to start off with. Better O3 filters supposedly would take care of this or lessen the star halo. Well, we're going to try it out with this. Anlia filter. All right, let's take a look at the nebula itself. And I got some pretty good data. I, I would be very happy with this, or I am very happy with this. 
with what I captured with this ZWO filter. It looks pretty well detailed, at least to me anyways. If we zoom in even closer, you can start seeing some of the uh, contrast in the image, and the stars look pretty pretty good as well. Now, now let's take a look at the Antlia 3 nanometer filter. Again, same thing, five minute sub, and I took it about mm, half hour later. And you really, probably, I don't know if you guys can see much on the YouTube video, but or there's a large feel, but take one thing you can see is take a look at that star again. You don't see that halo like you do over here. Well, let's zoom in closer. And look at that. That halo is gone. I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. And something else you can notice, you can if you're looking very carefully, you can see the stars, all the other stars look pretty sharp as well. So let's take a look at the nebulosity here. I don't know if you can see this too well, but man, it is a lot better. There is a noticeable, noticeable difference between this and my ZWO, which I was happy with. Let me zoom in so I can get a comparison. And look at this, look at the difference. The stars, all the stars are smaller with the Antlia filter and the contrast in here is just incredible. Okay, and even this right down here, these are the tadpoles. You're actually making, making you can making them out uh, much better with the Antlia versus the ZWO filter. So now what I've done, I've captured seven ZWO exposures and I've got eight Antlia exposures and I stacked them and took some darks with them. So, so I took, took away some of the amp glow and let's see what that looks like. Again, no other processing has been done on these. So it's all it was, was stack and the dark, take out the dark frames and that's it. And again, look at this. Now you can really see it even on the, even here you can see the, you can definitely make out that Star Halo with the ZWO filter. Again, it's completely gone with this Antlia filter. I was not expecting that uh, to be to be that way. And even taking a look at the whole nebulosity itself, you can actually much more contrasty in the Antlia. You can actually make it out the, the faint portion here, whereas the ZWO filter, it's more diffuse. Okay, let's take a look at some of the inner detail. And again, if you look at the ZWO, it looks like it's looks like some good data there. It is good data. But let's take a look at it with the Antlia, the Antlia's version. And man, it is just so much more clear, so much better. It's like night and day. Even the stars are sharper. And you can make out the tadpoles more, uh, much more in the Antlia. So quite satisfied. Okay, so I was expecting the Antlia filter to be better. I didn't know it was, was going to be this much better, but anyways, I set up a chart to compare the prices with uh, the Antlia, the ZWO, and some other brands, three nanometer filters and four nanometer filters, just so you can get an idea of what you're expecting with price-wise. Okay, so I made a comparison table showing the ZWO and Antlia filters as well as some other name brand filters. So this is the 1.25 inch 31 millimeter filters, the ones that I use. And you'll notice the ZWO, that's a seven nanometer bandpass. It's $129, so that's a fair price, I think. And the Antlia uh, that I tested, that I purchased actually that's a three nanometer and that's three hundred dollars now that may seem quite a bit of money but the results i think they speak for themselves and if you compare them to the astrodon and chroma which are top of the line filters they're three nanometer quarter inch one and a quarter inch filters well, the Astrodon here is $682, and the Chroma is $575. That is a huge jump. Now, again, these are top-of-the-line filters, 
but still, that's quite that's quite pricey. That's why I, I did not go with those. When I f- first purchased my ZWO filters, the Antlia wasn't available, so I the only choice I had was to go with these Astrodons or Chromas, which they're they're too pricey for me. However, if you can't afford them, then by all means, go with them, and that you should, or I would expect to you, you to get just as good, if not better, results. Bader or Bader, they have a four nanometer version, and that's two eighty five. So that's similar in price to the Alia. So hopefully, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know anybody that uses it, but if you do use those, and feel free to comment. I would expect it to be similar to the Alia. Now, a lot of you guys might use the two inch filters. How how do the prices go on those? Well, the ZWO that's 224, so that's fair price for what you get. The Antlia, well, the price jumps up $170, so that's now 470. But compared to the Astrodon and Chroma, the Astrodon is 900, and the Chroma is. I saw a lot of wacky prices, but the cheapest was 1200 for the two inch version. And Batter, they have a version, the four nanometer version, that's 417. So a little bit cheaper than the Antlia, but again, that's 4 nanometers versus 3 nanometers. Okay, I have a few final thoughts that I'd like to share with you as well. Okay, let's see. Final thoughts. The ZWO 7 nanometer oxygen 3 filter does a decent job overall for what it is. And it's uh, the most economically priced the Antlia 3 nanometer oxygen filter shows a big improvement over the 7 nanometer filter, at least based on my results. Different brands have very different prices. Antlia does a fantastic job for the price. And Chroma and Astrodon, those are top of the line, and I would expect you should get at least the same results as Antlia, if not better. That is, if you can afford it, go ahead and get it. Otherwise, I'd probably stick with the Antlia. Okay, it'd be interesting to see if the hydrogen and the sulfur does just as shows just as good an improvement as the oxygen. My guess is probably not. I, you might see a little bit uh, better quality out of the uh, hydrogen sulfur, but I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, and I hope you got some good information out of this, and we'll see you next time.